Hello model car fans, welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and here I'm going to do a how-to foil cast emblems for a model project of yours. If you're building a model kit and it doesn't have emblems, um, they're missing, or you want to move them if you're doing a custom, or some things like that, which uh, I've got a couple examples here of projects that I have done this before, and then my current duster, I need to do some on that, so we'll explain on that, but... Uh, First um, up right here is uh, my 70 Javelin SST here. This is the Mark Donahue that I built, and this has been featured on the channel. But this is a resin body. And this particular resin body, uh, when I got it from Decon Resins, it had no emblems on it. This SST emblem, the Javelin emblem here, and that 360, 390 emblem right there uh, was not uh, cast in the kit. They were missing... And I believe he had a more race car version of the body that he started with because I had talked to him about it. Um, and so the emblems were not there. Now, I, the, the hood emblem, this was a model Haas hood. Uh, it was more stock and I can get the model Haas hood. And the front and rear bumpers were model Haas as well because he had the race ones that had didn't say Javelin on them um, when I bought his, his body kit. But at the time when I built this model Haas, I can get... Um, the bumpers and the hood and some of the other small parts, the taillight lens. But anyway, um, when it came to this one, I've got a picture, um, and it'll be up right now, of the promo I had used for the emblems. I bought a busted promo, and I cast the interior tub from it. And then also, here's a picture of it in primer. You can see there are no emblems on the body at all. So I foil casted them off of the promo, trimmed them out, and glued them onto this one. Um, so that's how this one, this one's the same kind of thing, except for, um, this is a 58 Thunderbird convertible, which I know monogram makes a kit of it. And I have several of them, but this is actually an AMT kit, which they did not make a model kit of, um, you know, again, here's a, um, some pictures of the promo, um, that I used from Harold. He loaned me his original promo and the, um, plastic 1960 convertible body that I had used. Uh, so there's some photos of that. But so um, AMT, they did the 59 and the 60 annuals, but they didn't do a 58. And I had a 60 T-Bird and all the emblems were sanded off. So I was using that body, which is why this one has a hood that opens um, and has an engine in it. And I painted it all like a 58. And since uh, Model Haas actually had the wheels, the front and rear bumpers from a promo, um, all replacements for promos, and then these um, gun sight lights or fender ornaments that um, for the 59 kit, because um, the 58 promos didn't have these at all, but uh, the slot was in the fender for the 60 ones, which are a little bit different. I had gathered all of those parts from Model Haas at the time, um, as they did uh, offer those parts. Unfortunately, they're gone now. But And then I took the 60 body and I cast um, all of these emblems and glued them on here, and including the bird because the 60 birds are different wings and a different emblem. So since they were all sanded off, I was able to foil cast this onto it and convert this body to a 58. And I used a 59 interior tub as there's no difference between a 58 and 59, but this one had a 60 interior tub, which is different. But uh, stepping away from that build. And same thing, uh, some photos of work in process. And here's a table shot that you can actually see the pieces of aluminum foil. I got to get that going on on this one. This is my 72 duster. Oh, and a pro tip, um, as I kind of feel silly, but I laugh at myself for this. I highly recommend when you're painting your model kit that you paint all the parts. I actually forgot to paint the mirrors. They were still chrome and chrome, but I want them body color. Um, so I stripped them. So these need to be chromed and are painted and cleared and everything. So that's kind of setting me back um, as I plan to be a little bit farther on it. But just a, a little laugh there. But since I started with the 71 duster body and converted it into a 72, um, I filled in the marker lights. Now the 72 and later Mopars had a more generic marker light. And um, they were kind of in a similar location, but not the exact same location. Uh, 
on them. They're a little bit different location on the fenders. Matter of fact, here's my 73 body and you can see them there, but they're really faint, but they're there. So here's my 73 duster body and I can use that. And I've got some other bodies, but that's the first step in this. If you're going to foil cast something, you need something to foil cast it off of. So I went through my stash and dug out some of my potential candidates. Here is a seven. This one's technically a 74, but 73, 72, three and four challenger. Here's an NPC challenger. And there's the marker light that I'm going to be casting. Um, but they're really faint on this one. And this one I've been doing some work to a long time ago. I started to graft in um, the engine and chassis compartment from the later kit. But anyway, here is a 72, three or four CUDA. Now this one's got some really nice protruding ones. So this is one of the ones I'm really leaning towards using. Um, the size is much nicer and I think a little more appropriate for this particular one. So, and you don't necessarily have to cast all four corners, but you can. Um, on some of them, they're the same, whether, you know, you can put them wherever you want. And I showed you this duster already. This one's really faint. So I probably won't be using that one. And then this 79 uh, Volare, Plymouth Volare, it's got some really nice ones with some really nice detail, but they're a little bit big. So I think I'm going to cast some of these as well um, with the aluminum foil, and we'll see how those come out. So, um, and then I'll choose which ones I want. And that's part of it is when you do it, you make more than one set. Um, so in case you mess up, because it's very thin uh, how it's done, and it's kind of tedious. I'm not going to say it's easy. Uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets, but it's not as easy as you would like to think, but it's not that difficult, so don't be intimidated. So I'm going to um, clean this up off the table and start working on that, um, get my space and things ready for you. So hang on, and we'll jump ahead. All right, we're going to get started here as uh, I've cleared off uh, my bench of everything I didn't need in front of me at the moment. And there are a few things you're going to need, of course. Obviously, your subject matter here of whatever you're going to do. And uh, uh, aluminum foil. This is just regular Reynolds Wrap aluminum foil. Try to keep it as wrinkle-free as possible. Uh, that helps. And, of course, my body's pair of scissors, Q-tip, toothpick, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I use Loctite liquid super glue. Um, this is to pour it into the emblem after you're done with it from the backside. It'll harden and keep the shape of it. Um, so because of this, make sure you don't poke any holes through the aluminum foil or tear the foil when you're making yours. Um, but after it hardens, uh, you can uh, trim it and not really worry about it. But some things like if you do a door handle or something like that, that's a little thick. Um, Sometimes you'll have to go over it a few times. And every now and then, if you get a bubble in one of the letters, um, that makes it a little bit more difficult. So we'll, uh, since I'm only working on these side marker lights here, um, that's mainly what I'm going to focus on. But I'm going to put some on this emblem just to see how it comes out, even though that's not my goal at this time. It's strictly the marker lights. And we'll see how these ones come out, because these are the ones I'm really leaning towards using. I'm really curious how those are, but for reference, I'm going to see what this one looks like. Um, and I'm going to put one on this duster one just to see how that comes out. So anyway, um, you can cut your foil in nice little squares with scissors, which I'm going to do it on this time, or you can just tear it. I've done both, but here we go. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention, scotch tape, some clear scotch tape. And this is a little tip that I do on it. Just get a little piece and then I'll fold the tape over like so to get myself a handle that doesn't stick so I can easily pull it off later. And then on the foil, I just put it right on the foil like so. But I make sure that when I do this, 
that the aluminum foil is not on top of the emblem that I plan on uh, um, foil casting. So sometimes it's a little hard, so you gotta put it like way up high, like on this one, um, and then run it down the fender. And then I'll just uh, real quickly do it with my finger just to see what it looks like, to see how it's gonna come out. And I'll hold it down and then we'll start to burnish it down on the emblem itself. Try and keep it as flat as possible. Okay. And then push it in there to really get the detail out. And you want a fresh Q-tip and a fresh toothpick. You don't want one with any glue on it or used it for anything else. And then, whoop, it just shifted. So now you can see, kind of messed it up there. So I'm having a little bit of difficulty here with this area. All right, so there we go. Now let's get the detail back in it. All right. And I'm not too worried. Is this one square? I'm not too worried about anything around it. So there we go. Now when I remove it, I'll gently not touch the foil anymore, but just peel it off slowly and let it come off. So there you can see the inside of it and the outside of it. So there's one. Okay. And make extras because these are so flimsy. You can crush them, mess them up, um, distort them when you do the super glue. So we'll put that one down and we'll do another one. So let's uh, do a few more. This can be a bit time consuming, but I do, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do all of them right here, right in front of you as far as all seven or eight, basically for time constraints to keep the video short. Because you get the idea. Uh, rear one might be a little bit easier to do, so let's put this down here. And this will walk and move on you. Uh, matter of fact, let's move it over a little bit. Let's see how it comes out now. Okay, so that gives me an idea. I'll hold it down on one side. Okay, and since foil is thicker than like bare metal foil, I'm getting the rough shape with the Q-tip, and then I take the toothpick and get the fine detail, get it really down and stretched out around, which is really nice on this particular one. Like I said, got to be careful though. You poke a hole in it, the super glue will seep through. And I'm not pulling real heavily tight. I'm just trying to keep it flush. And stretch the foil. There's a rear. There we go. So there's another one. All right, so that's a couple off of the Barracuda. Let's see how the Valiant Emblem is gonna come out. And as you can see, I've got plenty of foil for messing up. They're going to mess up, it's easy to do. All right, let's fold another one over. So there we go, there's Valari.
You see how it's kind of mudded up there, but still fairly nice. But if you really want to get the detail, this is where you really get this thing in there. Just trace all around it. Get in the emblems and the letters as much as you can. Just get it down in the loop on the L. Okay. This is how I did the Thunderbird ones. And then the nice part about it, sometimes you're a little nervous about it. You can trim kind of around it, glue it to the body and do the paint over it and polish it and still get the, it to pop out. So there we go. I'll push it down with the Q-tip. Look at that. Huh? All right. Now to slowly pull this off and not damage it when you pop it off or flex it. All right, and you put the super glue on the inside. So there's another one. We'll just set that one down. Let's see what one of these marker lights looks like. I'm not too concerned about exactly where it is because it's just going to be a lot of extra stuff that will get tossed and scraped. And All right. So you can see how you need the toothpick to really get the texture to show through in this one. Get all the detail that the Q-tip is not getting. All right. Really getting that up there so you can see it. Hopefully it's not reflecting too much into the lens. And let's uh, peel this off carefully. All right. That does not want to lick on my finger right now. Here we go. All right. And let's do the duster emblem on that one. All right. And on this foil, one side's a little shinier than the other. I like to use the shinier side. Uh, that's Reynolds wrap for you. May not actually matter by the time you polish it or detail it where you may not see much of it. Or if you prime over the whole thing and then bare metal foil over it later, that's up to you. That is possible. Okay. Try and get this as close as possible, but that I can still see what I'm doing and not hit the phone. All right, there we go. And then if you wanna move emblems or relocate emblems, I should say, or even if you got one where one side is good and one side is sanded on or trashed or messed up, you can do this to do one side and add it to the other side or just move emblems into a custom spot that uh, didn't exist. And for giggles, let's do this door handle. They're a little bit hard as they're pretty pointy and uh, they could easily poke 
um, a nice little hole and be hard to uh, get the super glue in there. Also, there's no right or wrong or upside down to this. You can do it this way too. Top down, sideways, whichever way you want to do it, just as long as you're holding it kind of flat, just try and keep it from moving on you while you work it. Door handles are a little hard for this because of that. So let's uh, see what we can do here. And this is one way to get a door handle from one car to another. Another thing you can do as well is once you get it like this, although the risk to damage is higher, you can put clay on here on top of it and hold it down. Oops. I just shifted on that. So, but you can put clay on top of it to hold it down too. Kind of make a, a mold of it that way. All right, so let's uh, clean this up again since I got it to shift. Any of the wrinkles that are not near the emblem, I'm not too concerned about. So there we go. And this folded over, but here we go. Let's get this off. All right. So here we are. Got all my uh, uh, ones that I want to sample for now done. Now the next step is we'll uh, get some super glue and I like to do it this way. A piece of tape down. You guys have seen me do this before. I'll put uh, some tape down. And matter of fact, I'll put another piece of tape down just in case because when I do this door handle, I'm worried about putting the super glue on it. Um, and coming through, but I didn't see any tears that I saw, but we'll look at it a little bit closer. So I don't see anything light or anything coming through that that makes me wonder how it's going to be. But all right, so there's that. So here's a dab of super glue. And first step, I get my Q-tip, get my part. I'm kind of doing this up in the air, but I want to touch this as little as possible. Got my drip of glue just floating above, and I'll just flow it right into it and spread it around. I'm trying not to push. I don't have a background or anything that's doing anything, nothing that uh, I can do. Just hopefully don't poke through it. So there you can see the super glues kind of float around it. I'll let that sit. And if I got too much, like it seems like it's a little too high or maybe too much glue, I'll just spread it farther out. Okay, to get it nice and thin. Like that was a pretty good size bead. So there, um, just move it forward, spread it, get it nice and thin and out of the way. And we'll put this over here. And you let it dry. Let's do this one. Same thing. Get a bead going. A little harder to do under the camera here. Fill that. And this super glue will actually shrink down a little bit too as it dries. So there we go. Just make sure it's all wet. 
Don't put your finger in it. You will super glue a nice piece of aluminum foil to your finger. All right, emblems like this can be a little bit trickier. So here we go. And I'll just zigzag my toothpick. Try to make sure there are no bubbles that I can see. Move it around without pushing on it with nothing under the bottom side. Just letting the capillary action of the super glue and the toothpick just move it away of the emblem. So there we go. We'll let this one sit dry, harden. And we got a nice duster emblem here. Let's try this one. Again. And super glue tends to look a little dull on top of the aluminum foil, which makes it easy to tell where it's at. So when you see it, the light doesn't shine it, but you can see it dulls where it is in the aluminum foil. Okay, so that one had a nice big handle. Let's not forget these. Really got too much on this one, so I just move it away. But this is why you make extras. You'll see more of it. I'll make the rest of them, plenty of extras, um, off camera, and I'll continue on with this as I'll get these going so you can see what's going on. All right, that's all of these. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we'll uh, let those dry and we'll move on to the next step. Um, and I'm gonna make more of the ones that I like and see how I like those. But we'll get the, let these ones harden overnight, the super glue and check them um, and see how they are. So we'll continue on, stay tuned. Okay, well, I finished uh, making all the extras that I needed and uh, got the super glue on them. And here it's been uh, uh, a little bit more than 24 hours since I did this. So hopefully all of the super glue has dried. Uh, we'll move some of these off to the side. I still have this one here as reference on where exactly to mount them um, on my 72 that I got right here. This one's the 73 body. So we'll set that aside for a minute. Um, and then, of course, my Volari that I took some of these emblems off of. So we'll just uh, move some stuff out of the way. And then I grabbed a, a spare body just to glue on because there's a couple of different uh, ways of doing this uh, as far as attaching them goes. So that's just a scrap body that I don't have to worry about. Um, but uh, we'll uh, get some of this cleaned up here and see how we did. So uh, we'll start with some of some of these here and uh, you can see that's a pretty nice one right there so let's uh, uh first step is we'll just trim it and since these are just rectangles it makes it really easy to trim it with the scissors and watch where you where you are so let's turn it around this way All right. And sometimes it's just a little easier to trim it with the razor blade. So there's uh, one there. So you can see it's a little close, but I'll trim it a little bit more with the razor blade, but it's just hard to see what I'm doing right there so I'm going to do it right in front of me but it won't be out of won't be in a screen here okay so there it is trimmed to give you an idea you know and the super glue in there kind of gives it some rigidity but uh, you can easily 
crush it, but I can put it on here and get an idea where it's going to be and how it's going to look. And at this point, um, there's no real correct order to do this. Like this one's already painted and I intend to glue them on um, the clear paint. There's other times where I've put them on a raw body before uh, paint, um, sometimes before primer. But, you know, I got that one over there to show it either way. But um, I do do a couple of different ways as far as gluing them on. Like in this one, because it's already clear coat and I don't want to mess it up. And um, the fact that I use tape to hold it down, uh, I'll show you that here in a minute. I get a little careful about how um, I'm gluing it. So let's uh, let's get one of the bigger ones right here from the Volari and uh, see how that one comes out. And just be very delicate um, trimming it or cutting it. So, all right, so there's that one. So let's see how this one looks on here compared to the other one. I like it, but it seems just a hair big. Like it's just a little too big on this particular one. Let's put it back here. That's upside down. Really not too big there getting an idea so how that one will look versus this one okay all right so I'll make my choice there And bounce around on me all right now let's uh let's see those are all of those i'm just going to put these off to the side because i'm not going to cut each and every one of them on film here there's the duster one okay let's just see how this one looks you can see how the glue dried on the inside now it's frosty but a little thick where the emblem is I just try and when I got the super glue on there, just try and keep it level and not domed so that it can be flat. So we'll lay this down. And a lot of times like this, it's easier to lay it down and kind of, you know, trace it out with the razor blade. Well, this one's really hard to see that far away from me while I'm trimming it. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Yeah, not the best job, but I was doing it far away. So I'm gonna do it right here in front of me, but it'll be off the screen. Just clean it up a little bit more. Okay, here we go. They're trimming a little bit better. All right. You can take your time and trim that and get it uh, much better. But uh, now when it comes to attaching these, there's a couple of different ways. Um, one, you know, I like using the crystal clear. This is great for cleanup on, on a clear coat and on a painted surface. So here we go. Let's uh, just get a 
small dab, real, real small dab on there. And then I pretty much know I want to be right here. So I'll just put a little bit of glue and then lay it pretty much right there. Now I'm flipping it, this over, I glue on one side, nothing on the other side. There we go. So now it's there and you can leave it be and then I'll put the turn signal amber and stoplight red inside the appropriate ones. So there's that one. So kind of let that be, but that's using this on a clear coat. Now, when I'm putting it on another one, let's clean this off. Another way of doing this, and I've done this with super glue, especially when you you got a really tiny one or you really don't know what to do. So take a piece of tape, again, fold the, it over, and that way you have the handle. And then get your emblem grabbed by the tape, okay? Now, you're trying to figure out where to put it. So you can eyeball it, get it. You know where you want gently just stick it there you go say that's where you want it okay and you need to you know you don't quite get it centered or uh, flat or wherever you know kind of move it around but get it where you want it and once you have it here you go you can kind of tape it okay now this works better with super glue and not um, the white glue. So now you got it where you want it. So next step is now you got it attached, slowly pull and lift it and get it up and fold it over. All right, now get a tiny bit of super glue, put it on the tip of your toothpick A tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And where it goes, you can see it goes from frosty to clear. So you can kind of see where the super glue is. Okay. Now you got super glue on there. Now do a quick dab getting any of the extra off if possible. But you could possibly get some of that on there and be glued to the body. Now stick it in place. Give it a minute or two for the super glue to stick and then pull it at a different angle and it'll stay. Now it's on there. Okay. And if you get a little extra glue when you've got a raw body like this or one that's in primer, um, you can touch it up, kind of gently sand around it. And then you can paint and polish right over it like you would uh, foiled under an emblem there, so or under the paint. So check that out. And here's our Duster Thunderbird. This is a spare body that somebody had cut the inner fenders out of, and I just uh, bought a parts kit. And you use some of the parts, but that's kind of why this body's here. So there's how that's attached. And you can do that with these marker lights as well, doing the super glue or the white glue. But I prefer the white glue like I did on this one. And it's on there. And let that dry and touch it up. And you can remove that one. But this one being super glued, it's going to be on there. You can remove it, but you're going to have uh, some marks behind it. So this is more permanent. Um, and you can do the tape method on these as well. But it, be careful because if you're too close to a decal like this. You could lift the decal off or pull the clear off. So once it's a painted and cleared finish, I try not to use um, the tape on it, but use clear tapes. So you can see where you're going and be mindful of uh, any decals or anything around you as you're doing it. So gives you an idea what's going on there. All right, and then the one I was real curious about, this Velare. Let's see if we can get that one trimmed up. 
but it's really hard to do right here on the table here. And you can feel through the razor blade when you're cutting through some of the super glue and when you're not. Okay, let's get that trimmed. Okay. So you can kind of see how that is and how much you want to go around it, but it's a nice pronounced one like this. You can glue it right on just like you would bare metal foil, but I'm gonna try and trim it a little better. Let's see, pop. Turn it, turn it. I know it's hard for you to see because the camera's kind of far away and this is really tiny. Okay. Okay, so. Not really the best, but kind of see what that is like. But let's uh, glue it on. Just have a little bit more fun with it. Get another piece of tape. Let's put it right in the middle of the door. Or how about down low? And you can literally pick anywhere you want, like the Thunderbird emblem here. here. But let's see here. Let's get it. There we go. And again, we'll pull it, let it flip it over. There we go. And then let's do another. You see how it turns a little clear and you can easily see in there. Okay, so there we go. And again, we'll roll it back over. Taking our time. Give it a second. And then there we go. So now she's stuck on there. And then sometimes you have them like this, you got some rough edges that can be hidden under the paint as well. But Pretty decent. It looks like I got part of the V cut off on that one, but that's okay. It's just uh, an example, but I'm kind of showing it. And one of the last ones we did too was that door handle. Where's that at? Right here. Here's how that door handle, you see it filled it in right there. There's the door handle. Let's see. That's pretty loose already. There 
There we go. That's hard to believe, but there's a, a door handle. All right, let's glue that on, see what happens. Again, taking your time and maybe being able to see better on where you're trimming, get a nice uh, piece there. So how about a suicide door, Thunderbird? Okay, that's, let's get it a little more up here in parallel. There we go. Something kind of crazy. And we'll peel it. Oh, sorry. Didn't realize it was out of screen, but there we go. Same procedure as before. There we go. And I wonder if I can clean it up once it's on the plastic. Eh, not too well, but there you go. We've got ourselves a door handle where there wasn't one, emblems where there wasn't any, and a pretty decent representation. But you got to have something to start with, so that's part of the trick there. But just kind of having some fun there. All right, so I think I'll uh, conclude that right there and I'll finish doing this where I can get more in my face and put them on there and then uh, you know, move on in this duster and continue building that. But so you can see what's going on and how it's gonna come out. But anyway, I hope that helps you and shows you how to do foil casting and how much, you know, it's not too bad. Just taking your time and just being very diligent and detail oriented. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments. I really do appreciate it. And you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time.